Hey, Scotchy Bourbon Boys fans, this is Alan Bishop, Indiana's alchemist of the Black Forest. So I'm tuning in here today to tell you all about the One Piece at a Time Distilling Institute channel on YouTube. If you're at all interested in the art of distilling, whether it be home distilling or professional distilling, and the intense geekery that goes into that process, then check out the One Piece at a Time Distilling Institute on YouTube. I promise you're going to learn something you didn't know before about the art. This is Alan Bishop, head alchemist at Spirits of French Lick. Be on the lookout for our brand new Bottled and Bond Solomon Scott Rye Whiskey. Made from a mash composed of 65% rye, 35% corn, and 5% victory malt, this five-year-old 100-proof rye whiskey is a throwback to early 1800s-style rye whiskeys of the Ohio Valley. Named after the legendary Daisy Spring Mill distillery owner turned moonshiner Solomon Scott of Paoli, Indiana. Remember, drink responsibly and never drink and drive. Another whiskey and tinies ten or rapid tasting. Rapid tasting. Rapid tasting. Arr. I'm tiny. I'm whiskey, and we are part of the Scotchy Bourbon Boys podcasting team. Uh, we are doing rapid tasting of Laws Saw Lewis Valley Straight Rye, and this is cask strength. Cask strength. So. Uh, Remember, we're the Scotchy Bourbon Boys. Uh, you can check us out on www.scotchybourbonboys.com. Scotchybourbonboys.com. All the major podcast formats and YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and Facebook. Yep. All right. So uh, we're checking out what we got here. Laws and uh, Whiskey will do his thing. I don't do that on podcasts. Um, yeah, so for those of you that aren't familiar, Laws is, uh, Laws is based in Colorado. Uh, it is Colorado Distillery. Uh, they age their whiskey in Colorado. Um, their claim to fame, if you ever have a chance, they have a great tour. Uh, they got a great little tasting bar. They do sell bottles out of their, uh, distillery. Uh, I had a chance to go out there last year and, uh, take the tour and meet the people and, uh, it was actually a very good time. So it was a nice little tour. Uh, I think it was all $10. So for those of you that are used to Kentucky prices for tours, uh, this one is uh, is refreshing. I only like the Buffalo Trace prices. Because it's well. free. Yeah. So uh, so um, one of the things, let me, I'll read this and then I'll maybe share a little bit about the distillery. Uh, so this is San Luis Valley Straight Rye Whiskey Cast Strength. So... Uh, the cast strength is uh, only comes out a couple of times a year. Um, they do have uh, a rye, a bourbon, um, and I want to say a whiskey that's usually available on the shelf. Limited distribution, so it's not available here in Ohio. I actually don't think it's available in Kentucky. Uh, this bottle came to me through uh, a business trip to Maryland. So uh, in our pursuit of... <laughs> This looks like terror driven, but I'm sure that's not the word. Unapologetic whiskey. We found this individual barrel to be definitive of what originally drew us to the semi wild rye cultivated in the San Luis Valley. Deep perfume and taste of mint, anise, 
I'm glad you're not reading this. Salted toffee, orange peel, a suggestion of maple, and a serrano-like peppery finish that radiates into a complex, long finish. Eh, I need to work on marketing. Uh, we hope you fellow whiskey hunters will appreciate this uncut cast strength rye. The only age statement is it's aged at least three years. I'll tell you for when I was there, I think most of these uh, cast strength um, releases are uh, aged a little bit longer than this. This is barrel B21. Uh, it is 120.4 proof. Um, the interesting thing about Laws is um, one of the claims to fame is they are a farm to the table distillery, which what does that mean? Because that's kind of a fancy thing nowadays. Um, all of the grains that go into Laws are sourced in Colorado. Uh, and one of the things that they love the most is this rye that comes from the San Luis Valley in Colorado. Uh, basically, Laws, as well as a couple other Colorado distilleries, are the only ones that are using it um, because they buy it all. So, um, like uh, Al Laws founded this. Um, he's got an interesting backstory. If you ever get a chance to meet him, uh, <laughs> you should ask him how you came into bourbon. And uh, and we're going to give this a go. So, what do you think, Jeff? I'm scared. Why are you scared? Because this knows is the nose of, now I don't get formaldehyde. Oh, I'm not getting that, but it's the kind of rise that, once again, everybody, there's certain rise that just don't go well with me that absolute, absolutely people love, but I just can't, I don't see it. And that's the great thing about whiskey and bourbon. If you don't like it, I'm not going to sit here and trash the living hell out of it or whatever because I don't like it because of the fact that I understand that other people have different tastes and they love this. So seagrass rye was one. Uh, also, Heaven's Door were ones that I was not happy with. Oh, Heaven's Door. Yeah. All right. Yeah, the nose has a astringent dill. Picking up a little bit of dill. I'm picking up a little bit of... Whatever that flavor is, I don't like, <laughs> and I won't say. All right. Anyways, let's give it a let's give it a taste. Who? Wow. So you're going first on all this. Am I? Yeah, you just go first off the first ones because I want to know because I know you aren't the huge fan of rye. I am not a I'm huge not, fan of rye. <sighs> there's not a lot of there's not that chocolate mint that I like. I'm picking up a little bit. I would say the only aspect. Oh, there's so much dill on the nose. This would make a good mixer for a Bloody Mary, a bourbon blood, a rye Bloody Mary. Put that mm. in there. And that's okay. So you're going first. What do you think of the nose? I actually like the nose. Um, to me, it's got the spiciness of the rye, but I'm still getting the undertones that I love about bourbon. Um, I don't have a lot of the ethanol that's coming through for this being that the proof it's at. I don't get any bourbon -esque aspects of it. You don't? That's See, I why get a little bit of vanilla and a little bit of that rye spice. I get the rye spice, but I get dill... And there's just a, I just got a salt. It's salty. <laughs> it's salt <laughs> filled with salt. And then. How okay, do you get salt out of this? I, I'm getting salt. I'm just telling you what, this is the kind of thing. That's why. I mean, it's like you're, you're tasting a whole different thing. of I, my, I my, absolutely my taste, am getting something completely palate, different from Yeah, you. but my palate, when it gets this, it just goes, it just like I said. I get to, like I, you you give me the price. You give me the price on the on the nose. What you're giving it? Uh, <sighs> I mean, I'm gonna give this nose a 19. I actually like it. Oh God. Okay, so I'll give it a 10. Wow. So you get to be the Russian judge well, for this one. <laughs> I, I just, look. You gave it a 19, so that rose my score a little bit. <laughs> I'll, I'll admit, you raised your score to make it a 19. I, I rose it to be a 10. Oh, God. I got to taste it again. Oh. 
Mm -mm. I'm gonna make you drink a full glass. Mm -mm. That's it. It's so salty <laughs> and briny. You're so bad. It is not. It's salty, briny, and dilly. Wait, is this bringing back the memories from when you were in prison? No, it doesn't. It's horrible. <laughs> it's not. Because I have better memories from prison. I'm sorry. Well, Once know. again, everybody, it's just my palate. Yeah, man. you, you, you're. Wow. This is the kind I don't like. Evidently. And it's not, it's not, I'm not saying that everybody else shouldn't like that this. this is a bad rye. This is the kind of rye that I understand that people, just because I don't like it doesn't mean you're not going to like it. So, it's, this is why you're drinking it next to me. Um, for me, <sighs> it's very anise forward. So that black licorice flavor. Where um, is black licorice? It's everywhere in this glass. No, there's no black licorice. It's everywhere in this glass. I like black licorice. Let me see. You're making me drink it again. You're making up there's black licorice. So I no, absolutely. There's all kinds of black licorice mm -hmm. in this flavor profile. I got black licorice. I've got just a little bit. Clearly, that you get the baking spices. No, what the black licorice, it doesn't go black licorice. It's just it's pure dill salt. But I see where you're, uh, you're saying it's black licorice. Yeah. I see it. Okay. Maybe I could pull it out on the finish a little, but then I got this. I feel like my breath is Getting done something weird. It's <laughs> just like, okay, so taste wise, I have to give the taste. My opinion on the taste is an eight. <laughs> I gave it. A, I gave the nose a ten, but the taste is an eight. So for what? what don't we do body second? Well, we'll do taste, and then I'll do body because body. I just didn't want to just. I, I I got the really bad things over with first. Okay. <sighs> so for me, the taste is actually pretty pleasant for a rye. <laughs> um, it it's it's really it's it's encircling all the parts of my palate. Uh, I get a lot of anise. Um, I get a little bit of almost like a touch of caramel. Lots of baking spices, like the the, this, the the hard baking, like spice cake on steroids. If salt's a baking spice. I gotta agree <laughs> with you. And, and dill I, pickles. How, how can you taste dill pickles and salt? It's what I'm tasting. Oh, it, that is so weird. It's not. At least it's not formaldehyde. That oh. one tastes like I got formaldehyde. That's not it. But. So I, I'm going to give the taste. I'm going to give the taste of this a twenty. Okay, so we'll go body. I could go fifteen on the body. It fills my mouth with the horrible taste to me. Very, very well. It. There's no doubt. That's yeah, a strong it go, point. It of definitely this. goes everywhere. I'm a twenty-two. And then finish. It gets it, it can get an eleven because there's a little bit of black licorice that I can pull out like one eighth of a percent point. So I'll give it a I'll give it eleven so it'll finish better. So um I'm at ten, twenty-one, twenty-nine, thirty-nine, forty-four. Yeah, so the finish for me. What I like about this particular rye. <laughs> How can you not smell dill pickle? Because I've eaten a lot of dill pickles and that doesn't smell anything like oh it. Oh my God, I eat, I love dill pickles. I just don't like dill pickled rye. I'm not looking for, and I even tasted pickle flavored, pickle flavored bourbon is, is okay, but not the rye, whatever that pickle, that salt is just, it just, it's a thing in my brain. So the finish I'm not for... going to be able to have sex for a week. <laughs> because you're going to be thinking about pickles? No, because it hit that thing in my brain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know how some make you amorous? I got to tell this you, does there, not. This, there, there's nothing about a dill pickle that would prevent me from... Yeah. So anyway, um, for me, the finish, I really like the finish. Uh, it stays forward in the palate, which is a little bit weird. A lot of times the finish for me moves to the throat. Uh, not a big hug for the, the proof. Um, but I'm going to give the finish a 22. Okay. So what are you at? Uh, I'm at, uh, what am I at? 82? I'm at 44. 
<laughs> I don't think there's ever been See? something but, you've liked this little. Yeah, but but you have to understand, you're hitting the notes that this is the part of rye when I was first tasting rye, why I didn't like rye. But there's other ryes that, that you know, and it's it's just, I understand. Pe you, pe you gave it, it, this is why we illustrate it. You got to go with what you like. Right. So, which is why I bought this bottle instead of their bourbon. So you were at eighty-two, you said. Yeah. And I'm at forty-four, so seventy-two, fifty-four, sixty-two. Where were you? Forty-four. Yeah, we're like at sixty. Or twenty-one points apart, so you'd take twenty-one out of your forty-four. You were at sixty-three. Right. So sixty-three. There you go. Well, I got to tell you, Laws Al, I like this. Um, evidently, Jeff doesn't. Well, and um, I'm not saying I don't. Uh, they got bourbon and they got other stuff. That's true. I mean, I, I'm I, not saying I would. In all fairness, when you go there, you get to you get a flight and you get their bourbon, their rye, and I think a whiskey. Um, I'd have to go back and look at my pictures and see what I drank. Uh, I tried the cast strength down at the bar, and I like this the best. I would say the it's full. It's full bodied. There's nothing wrong with how it was distilled. It's just not my flavor profile. And I, it's like you got to be honest when you're well, on on the podcast. Yeah, absolutely, on the taste. And you're entitled system. to your opinion, right? Uh, and it, interestingly it, enough, the same grains they use on this, we sampled from another Colorado distiller, but it was bourbons, and you like that better. So, mm -hmm. so maybe it's it's just the mix of the rye and the corn here. It's just the rye. Uh, you give me a bourbon, it's actually, be a whole different. This thing. might not have any corn in it. I mean, I loved Heaven's Door bourbon and their Tennessee bourbon, but their rye was just rancid to me. I mean, wow. it was just horrible. All right. Well, I for one. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Uh, Sixty-three uh, out of a hundred between the two of us. One loved it. One did not. But that's the way it goes in the whiskey world. I don't think he's a piece of crap because he likes something. I don't. And he probably does think I'm a piece of crap. No, I'm just kidding. He doesn't <laughs> think it. And that's what it's supposed to be because we both shared a pour and we had in, in, uh, interesting talk and uh, mm. conversation. And that's what whiskey's about. It's about mm. good bourbon, good rye, good whiskey, good friends, and good times. Remember, everybody, we're the Scotchy Bourbon Boys, www.scotchybourbonboys.com. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and Twitter, and then all major podcast formats. And, and then go out and live your life dangerously. You said it. All right, everybody. Cheers, my friend. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, show me the way to the next whiskey bar. Oh, don't ask why. Oh, don't ask why. Show me the way to the next whiskey bar. Oh, don't ask why. Oh, don't ask why. For if we don't find the next whiskey bar. I tell you we must die I tell you we must die I tell you, I tell you I tell you we must die Dent Crossing, Gethsemane, Kentucky Timeless hospitality that stirs the spirit Dant Crossing is a one-of-a-kind destination for unforgettable weddings, memorable corporate events, day trips, and weekend getaways. The pastoral campus is anchored by Logstill Distillery and includes an amphitheater that seats 2,000, a 12-acre lake for fishing and unique lodging options, creating an immersive experience that's rooted in the community and culture of our little slice of Kentucky. More attractions will open soon at Dant Crossing, including our 21,000 square foot distillery, which we will have the ability to produce 15,000 barrels of spirit each year. A network of wooded walking trails, fully functional private train depot, farm to table restaurant, and the legacy, a premier wedding and events venue. Whether you're looking to host an event, book a stay, or reserve a tasting, we're ready to welcome you. Learn more at dantcrossing.com.